Hello everyone, it's Benny, and in this video, we're going to be continue working on doors. So, what I'm going to do in this video, to start off with at least, is I'm going to go into our level, and I'm going to start adding in doors that we can paint in the level. And so, here's how I'm going to do this. Right now we have red channel for walls and green channel for floors, or wait, or do I have that backwards? Either way, the red and green channels are being used for, you know, texturing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the blue channel for placing items or special actions, you know, things like doors or enemies or items, things like that. And you can set this to pretty much whatever you want, but I've gone with all multiples of 16 just because that's the way I am. And I decided the doors will be 16. So, oh. And... I did sort of just off screen, but what I did is I sampled one of the pixels from our level, because we're using the same texture and floor combination everywhere, and now I'm just changing it to 16. So texture and floor should be the same, except now it should have a door in it. And I'll go ahead and close that to give myself some room. And, well, right now I don't actually have a lot of places to have doors, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to sample a black pixel, and I'm going to start adding in some places where I can put a door. For example, let's add... That yeah, looks out a lot better than I thought it would, actually. I'm going to add something there. I'm going to add something there. And let's switch. Let's add a door here. And... Yeah, let's add a door here. And now I'll do something with that later. Let's see. Okay. I'll make these into rooms. So let's add a black there. And make them in, those into doors. And right now this is purely artistic. It, it really does not matter where your doors are. I'm just placing doors somewhere so we can test it. And... Actually, yeah, that should be good, so... With that, I'm gonna go ahead and save our image for now, and that's perfectly fine. Okay, cool. So, our image should be saved, and we should now be able to... well, actually write the code. Now, of course, since we've done something in the level, we're gonna have to change the generate level method. I'm already in there, in the level class. And here's what it's going to go down. Since I'm making the blue channel be essentially the special channel, I'm going to create a... Uh, yeah. Well... Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to create a private method right here. Private void. I'm going to call it add special. It's going to take in some int called blue value. And then I'll just add everything from here. Definitely not the object-oriented way of doing things, but then again, this I said at the very start of this, I'm not going to be coding this in the most beautiful way you could imagine. And all I'm going to do here is I'm just going to call add special at the very top, and for the parameter, I'm going to pass in this. Except, I'm going to change the mask to 0x0000ff, and what that's going to do is that's going to act as a bit mask. It's going to get rid of every single number except for, well, the blue channel, because that's last. There's the red, the first two, the green, whoops, well, that doesn't matter, but the green, the second two, and the blue, the last two. And it should mask it all out and give me just the blue value. And for now, what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to test. If blue value equals 16, then we're going to... Yeah, why not? I'll make it a new method. We're going to add door. And this may require some information that I haven't passed yet, but oh well, I'll cross that bridge when I come to it. And cool. So, door. To create a door, I'm going to need a transform and a material. So I'm going to create door result equals new door. I'll figure out what I'm going to do with it later. And I'm going to need some transform and some material. As for... oh. <laughs> well, I don't quite want to do that. What I want to do is I want to create a transform, door transform. It's going to be the position of the door, which should be based on, well, this, but... Yeah, I, I'm going to need more parameters, but again, I'm going, to worry about when it, yeah, I'm going to worry about that when I come to it. It's going to be a new transform, and do I need parameters for this? No, okay. And... yeah. And for material, I believe I just want, well the same material this has. That's what that material is. Yes, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Getting a little sidetracked, but yeah. 
So I do want the same material as the level because, well, I'm having everything based on those 16 textures. If you want a specific set of textures just for doors, then that's fine. I personally don't... I'm not doing that, but if you want to, you can do stuff. But I'm just going to do the easy way. And I'm just going to go with, well, the same material that has. Okay, now I come to, come to a problem that's a little bit trickier. Our doors can have a little bit of different orientations. For example, this door should be facing, well, like, on this axis. And yeah, let's undo that before I destroy something. And like, this door should be on this axis. Again, undo before I destroy something. So I'm going to need some axis detection. And that can be a little bit interesting. So first off, I have one boolean, which will be true if it should be aligned on the x-axis. And... Okay. Okay, fair point. At this point, I really just need... Yeah, the, the i and j value. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take in some int x and int y. I'm going to pass it in as a parameter here, i and j. And same here, I'm going to need some x and y, and pass it right on through. And here, what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if level.getPixel sub x, and yeah, y minus 1, so the... It's either the... I can't visualize it right now because I'm not entirely sure how... Because I know I did some texture flipping. This will either be the pixel below it or the pixel above this. But either way, it really doesn't matter because I'm going to have to check both anyways. I'm going to have to check if that... Mask out the alpha, so FFFFF. If this whole shenanigan is zero. So this will be true if and only if either the pixel below, above or below... I think it's above, is blank. And I'm also going to, er, is zero, it's a wall. And I'm going to perform the exact same check for the pixel the other way, which I believe is the one below it. And that's why I'm going to do orientation detection. This will be on the x-axis because, well, for example, this door, it should be... Wait. Yeah, this door should be on the x-axis. And the way I detect that is I look at the pixel above it, it's a wall, Look at the pixel below it, it's a wall, so the extra will be true for this. It'll be false for this because, well, empty space and empty space. Oh, didn't need to save, but hey. And that's a reliable way of detection because, well, you're never going to have a door that leads into just a wall that would be kind of pointless. So, yeah. And I'm also going to do this exact same check. Wait. Okay, never mind. For a second there I thought I'd screwed up the some parentheses. I'm going to do the exact same check except on the x-axis for the y door. So, just to help you visualize, if I go back to here... Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a door that should be aligned on the y-axis. I'm looking at to the left and the right, and if there are both walls, like with that, then this boolean will be true. And now we have a little bit of a trick to this, because there are some invalid orientations. One of these has to be true. We can't have neither of them being true, we can't have both of them being true. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to check if x, x door, and I'm going to use the x or operator, which is the caret. x or y door. So now this will return true if either x door is true or y door is true, but not if both of them are true. So, yeah. And that's exactly what I'm looking for. So if one of these is true, but actually I'm going to invert it. So if neither X door nor Y door are true, or both of them are true, then I'm going to have to do some... Well, actually no, I'm not going to have to do anything. I'm going to have to give the user an error because they fail at level designing. So level generation has failed frowny face. You placed a door in an invalid location. There. 
and I should probably put in x and y values, so plus x plus comma plus y. And there, I'm going to create a new exception just to, th to print stack trace for debugging and quit at this point. So cool. And now, at this point, I'm guaranteed that one of these will be true, but not both of them, because, well, otherwise I get the big frowny face error message. Whew. And with that, I'm going to have to actually, well, add this. So let's start out if it's in the y-axis. So if y do one, I want to do something. First off, I'm going to want to, you know, actually initialize the position. So set... Is there no set position method? Oh, right, set translation, excuse me. I'm going to want to set the translation to pretty much, well, almost the x and y coordinates. Want x, z, comma, 0. No y, because again, y is up and down. Not, y is vertical, so I don't want this on, you know, the x, z plane, so. And y. But, hmm, there's a bit of a trick to this, isn't there? I have in my notes that I should p add do y plus spot length over 2 in order to align it properly, but I've completely forgotten what happens if you don't, so just for fun, I'm going to leave it like that for now, and we're going to see what happens, and then when things go horribly, horribly wrong, we're going to fix them. And... other than that, yeah, we're going to add a new door. So, wait. Yeah. Wait. Wait. Oh, right, right, right. I'm doing the door creation at the bottom, of course. So actually, I don't need to do anything here. In that case, let's move on to X door. So, this is going to be almost the same thing, actually. One can want to do this, except here I have the notes I want to do x plus spot, and this would be spot width, wouldn't it? Spot width over 2. But here's the thing. In my default orientation, the door is facing on the y-axis, so I actually want to rotate this, so I'm going to do... So I'm going to change the orientation. Door transform dot set rotation 0, 90, 0. That should, keyword should, rotate it into the proper position. And with that, something is going to go horribly, horribly wrong. Well, actually, yeah, something is going to go horribly, horribly wrong, because I haven't done anything with the door yet. I've just created this door, and I'm not doing anything with it. And that's a little bit of a problem. So, let's go ahead and fix that. I'm going to private... Yeah, let's comment this out. I'm going to have a private... Well, yeah, let's do an array list of doors, called doors. And in my constructor, I'm going to initialize this to a new array list. So doors equals new array list door. Nothing special here. And yeah, I can go ahead and get out of that. So now update. I'm going to create a for each. So for each door, door, and doors. Door dot update. Actually, that way I can keep the code. So in fact, oh, it helps I spell update right. So in fact, I'm just going to copy. Yeah, I'm just going to copy that for the render code. And, oh, oh, right, collision. Actually, you know what, I'm going to keep collision commented out for now, because otherwise, well, with the way I have the level laid out right now, I'll end up at this point, and I won't be able to see anything else go on. So I'm just going to get rid of door collision for now. And other than that, I think that should be enough to just go ahead and test this, and see what exactly happens when you don't align your doors properly. So, let's see how ridiculous this looks. So let's go ahead and run. Doesn't crash yet. And... Oh dear, the doors aren't even in existence. Okay. Probably yeah, probably because I never added them, so... Doors.add... And actually, since I'm never using that for anything else, I can just... <laughs> I said that really fast, I'm sorry. Since I'm not using that variable for anything else, I can just add it directly. Also, I'm really sorry about the ridiculous frame rate. As I mentioned in 
an update video which I made just before this. I... Oh dear! Okay. Well, actually, I want to, you know, initialize this before I create this. Or create... Blah. Before I generate the level, so I don't do that. But anyways, as I was saying, I, I'm sorry for, well, the ridiculous frame rate. I have not adjusted my recorder to be, well, for recording things like I like yet. Because I have a new recording setup, like I mentioned in the update. So bear with me while I try getting this thing sorted out to record properly. But anyways... The doors appear to be mostly working, but as you see, there's a little bit of an alignment issue. And someone's vacuuming. That's just great. I'll finish this up, and then I'll stop until they finish. But, what I'm trying to... Hey, now you're making me lose my train of thought. What I want to do here, so now I want to put this in so that... Oh, dagnab it. One moment. Wait. Never mind, never mind. I thought someone was knocking on the door. Now I'm going to place the alignment code in. This is just offsetting it slightly so it'll be in the center of the position on the appropriate axis. So now if I run, all the doors should be aligned properly. And, whoops. Oh, that's aligned properly. Aligned properly here. And excellent! So now we can paint doors in. But, unfortunately, someone is still vacuuming right outside my door, so... I'm going to go ahead and stop recording for a moment, and wait for them to finish their thing. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to call the video here. So, thank you. Hope you enjoyed. And next time, we're going to add Collision back in. We're going to make our doors actually, you know, able to open. Openable, I guess. And also, there's just one thing I want to mention. In my texture class, I went ahead and did that. I did make a change. I changed our texture to load not with slick util. I changed it to load, well, manually because, frankly, I just when I loaded up the project in my new IDE, I just didn't feel like importing slick util, so I just made it. Well, I made my own method for it since that was all I was using it for. It has absolutely no effect on you. You can keep using slick util if you want, and in fact. I'm going to go over exactly what I did in here when I get back to the 3D Engine series, but I just thought I'd let you know that I did that, and it doesn't affect you, you don't need to worry about it. So yeah, thank you, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time!